I offer you two games to play. Game A is simple. Every time you play it, you're guaranteed to lose money. Game B is equally straightforward. Every time you play it, you're also guaranteed to lose money. But if you alternate between these two guaranteed losing games, you can actually make a profit, not just break even. You can generate consistent, predictable winnings by switching back and forth between two games that individually will bankrupt you. This isn't a trick or a loophole. It's a mathematical phenomenon discovered by physicist Juan Perondo. Let's construct our losing games using something more tangible than Perondo's original biased coins. We'll use American roulette wheels, because as statisticians Andrew Gelman and Deborah Nolan noted in their 2002 paper, you can load a die, but you can't bias a coin. Game A operates like a standard roulette game with a twist. An American roulette wheel with 38 spaces, 18 red, 18 black, and two green zeros. But in game A, you can only bet on red or black, never on green. This restriction creates a subtle but crucial disadvantage. Your odds of winning any single spin are 18 out of 38, which equals 47.36%. That's just slightly less than 50-50, but that small difference is mathematically devastating. With a 53.6% chance of losing each spin, the house edge works out to about 5%. This means that theoretically, Every time you bet $1 on game A, you'll lose about $0.05 cents on average. Start with $100 and keep playing, and you'll be completely broke after roughly 2,000 spins. The math is relentless. Game A is a guaranteed long-term loser. Game B appears more sophisticated, but it's actually more brutal than game A. This game consists of two sub-games, B1 and B2, and which one you play depends on a seemingly arbitrary rule. The amount of money you currently have, here's how it works. If your remaining money is a multiple of three, like $93, $81, or $66, you must play B1. If your bankroll is any other amount, you play B2. When you're forced to play B1, you can only make what's called a corner bet. This means choosing an intersection of four numbers on the roulette layout, say 26, 27, 29, and 30. You win $1 if the ball lands on any of those four numbers. Your odds of winning B1 are therefore 4 out of 38, which equals roughly 10%. This means you'll lose 90% of the time when playing B1. It's an absolutely terrible game from the player's perspective, designed to drain your money rapidly. B2 seems like a gift after the punishment of B1. Here, you get to choose a combination of winning conditions. You can bet on red or black and odd, or even simultaneously. If you choose red and evens, you win whenever the ball lands on any red space, or any even space, regardless of color. The magic of B2 is that the two green zeros also count as winners for you. This gives you 18 red spaces, 9 black even spaces, and 2 green zeros, a total of 29 winning spaces out of 38 possible outcomes. Your odds of winning B2 are 76%. At first glance, Game B seems promising since there are more possible money amounts that aren't multiples of three than there are amounts that are multiples of three, you should be playing the favorable B2 game more often than the terrible B1 game, right? Here's where the mathematics becomes counterintuitive. Game B is actually what mathematicians call a Markov chain, a stochastic process where your future depends on your current state, not your history. The key insight is that even though there are only three possible states for your money balance, multiples of three, one more than a multiple of three, or two more than a multiple of three, the probabilities of being in each state aren't simply one-third each. When we analyze the Markov chain mathematically, your probability of being forced to play the terrible B1 game is actually closer to 40%, not the 33% you might expect. The winning edge that the good B2 game provides simply isn't enough to compensate for the devastating losses from B1. The result is that game B, despite its complexity and the generous B2 component, is also a guaranteed long-term loser. In fact, it's often worse than game A, because B1 is so punishing when you're forced to play it. Now, we have two games, each guaranteed to lose money over time. Game A loses about 5 cents per dollar bet. Game B loses even more, due to the disproportionate impact of the terrible B1 subgame. But when you alternate between these two losing games, playing game A, then game B, then game A, then game B, something mathematically magical happens. The combination generates consistent profits. To understand why this works, let's create a simplified version that makes the math crystal clear. Imagine you start with $100. Every time you play game A, you lose exactly $1. No randomness, just a guaranteed loss. 
If you played only game A 100 times, you'd lose $1 per game and end up with $0. Pure, predictable failure. Now consider this version of game B. If your current money amount is an even number, you win $3. If it's an odd number, you lose $5. Again, these are guaranteed outcomes based solely on whether your money is even or odd. Playing only game B would be even worse than playing only game A. You'd lose money faster because the penalty for having an odd amount, losing $5, is more severe than the reward for having an even amount, winning $3. But watch what happens when you alternate between these two losing games. 1. Start with $100, even number. 2. Play game. A. Lose $1, now have $99, odd number. 3. Don't play game B with an odd amount. That would cost you $5. 4. Play game A again. Lose $1. Now have $98. Even number. 5. Play game B. Win $3. Now have $101. Odd number. 6. Play game A. Lose $1. Now have $100. Even number. 7. Play game B. Win $3. Now have $103. Odd number. By cycling through A, A, B, A, B, you can repeat this pattern indefinitely, gaining money each cycle Despite playing two games that individually guarantee losses, the paradox works because alternating between the games changes the probability distributions in a way that neither game can achieve alone. Game A pushes your money total in a direction that makes game B more favorable, while game B pushes your money total in a direction that makes game A more favorable. Think of it like this. Game A is like a flat, slightly downward slope. Game B is like a steep sawtooth pattern with dramatic ups and downs. When you combine them by alternating, the flat slope of game A positions you optimally for the sawtooth pattern of game B, while the sawtooth pattern of game B positions you optimally for the flat slope of game A. This creates what physicists call a ratchet effect, directed motion achieved by alternating between two mechanisms that individually don't produce forward progress. The truly shocking aspect of Pirando's paradox is that you don't even need to alternate the games strategically. You can choose randomly between game A and game B, flip a coin to decide which one to play each round, and you'll still generate long-term profits. Stan Wagen's Pirando Paradox Simulator demonstrates this beautifully, using Pirando's original biased coin probabilities, which closely match our roulette examples. When you set it to alternate between games in a specific pattern, you clearly win over time. But the remarkable discovery is what happens when you choose randomly between game A and game B. Most individual sessions of 1,000 random alternations produce wins, though occasionally variance causes short-term losses. But when you run 2,000 simulations of 1,000 games each, a clear pattern emerges. There's a definite upward slope in profits over time. The random alternation doesn't win as much as a carefully orchestrated strategy, but it consistently wins. Despite having no plan, no specific pattern, and no deliberate exploitation of the game's mathematics, randomly alternating between two losing games yields long-term profits. To fully understand Pirando's paradox, we need to examine the Markov chain analysis that reveals why game B alone is a loser, but game B alternated with game A becomes a winner. Game B operates as a three-state Markov chain based on your money modulo 3, the remainder when divided by 3. Your money can be in one of three states. State 0. Amount is a multiple of 3. Play B1 with 10% win rate. State 1. Amount is 1 more than a multiple of 3. Play B2 with 76% win rate. State 2. Amount is 2 more than a multiple of 3. Play B2 with 76% win rate. The crucial insight is that these states don't have equal probability. The transitions between states, caused by winning or losing each game, create an uneven distribution where you spend more time in state 0, forced to play the terrible B1, than the simple one-third you might expect. When you win B1, 10% probability, you move from state 0 to state 1. When you lose B1, 90% probability, you move from state 0 to state 2. When you win B2 from state 1, 76% probability, you move to state 2. When you lose B2 from state 1, 24% probability, you move to state 0. When you win B2 from state 2, 76% probability, you move to state 0. When you lose B2 from state 2, 24% probability, you move to state 1. Analyzing this transition matrix reveals that the long-term probability of being in state 0, where you must play B1, is approximately 40%, not 33%.
This higher-than-expected frequency of playing the terrible B1 game is what makes Game B a long-term loser. Game A has a different effect on these states. Since Game A always subtracts exactly $1, it cycles through the states in a predictable pattern. State 0 to State 2 to State 1 to State 0. When you alternate Game A with Game B, Game A's predictable cycling disrupts the natural equilibrium that makes Game B unprofitable. Game A pushes you away from the high probability state zero that forces you to play B1, while simultaneously positioning you for the favorable aspects of Game B. At this point, you might be wondering whether you can use Perondo's paradox to beat real casinos. The answer is definitively no. Real casino games are specifically designed to be independent events. Each spin of a roulette wheel is completely separate from every other spin. Each pull of a slot machine lever is isolated from all previous pulls. Each hand of blackjack, when properly shuffled, doesn't depend on the previous hand's outcome. Perondo's paradox requires that the two games interact, that your performance in one game affects your situation in the other game. In our examples, your money total from game A determined which subgame you played in game B, and vice versa. Casinos deliberately eliminate such interactions. They ensure that the outcome of one game never influences your position in another game. A roulette result will never steer you toward an advantageous round of craps or poker. Each bettable event exists in its own mathematical bubble that pops as soon as that round ends. This independence requirement is one reason you rarely see new games introduced at casinos. It's surprisingly difficult to create games that are 1. Completely independent of all other games. 2. Give the house a consistent mathematical edge 3. Give players enough chance of winning to be fun and engaging 4. Are simple enough for players to understand quickly. Any new game must pass rigorous mathematical analysis to ensure it can't be combined with existing games to create unexpected advantages for players. Paradox proves that sometimes the solution isn't to find better options. It's to find better ways to combine the options we already have.